This is Pratsky Game Reviews, episode number one, where we'll be reviewing Memoir 44. This is an older game, released in 2004 by Days of Wonder, designed by Richard Borg. This is a World War II combat strategy game, really for two players, though you can play up to eight with team play. Age range says eight and up, and I would agree with that. I play with my 11-year-old, and it works great with him. Uh, on a complexity level, I would say uh, it's probably about a 4 out of 10. Uh, pretty simple, easy to learn rules, doesn't take long to dive right in, and the average game length is about 30 to 60 minutes or so. So, now, I've seen a lot of reviewers uh, do things where they'll show you the rules, they'll show you some gameplay, and then do their final thoughts. I'm going to change that up a little bit at least to start here and cover what I think I like about the game and what I don't like about the game and what I recommend it or not. And then I'll give you some more details after that to provide some context to what I say if you want to see it. Um, so to start, let me talk about what I don't like about the game. There isn't much to be honest. Um, really my gripes are that I wish that all of the expansions that have come out throughout the years were more easily accessible. Uh, of which they are not. There are some that you can get on Amazon for a pretty decent deal, either at retail or a little bit below, but there's also a handful of ones that I would really like to have that I can't get without going onto eBay and paying my right leg for it, really. They're, they're way more expensive than they should be. Uh, it would be great if Days of Wonder would release those again. I'd like to get them, but that's kind of a bummer. Uh, the other thing is not really a gripe, but one thing that I wish that they had done, and that is in the core rulebook, there are 16 scenarios that you get to set up and play through. And other than that, there's no real framework for creating your own scenarios. And I feel like that wouldn't have been too tough. Maybe there's stuff online I haven't looked yet, but to create some sort of framework for doing that, some sort of point system or something for creating your own uh, army, and having it be somewhat fair, and then a good way for each player to contribute to setting up all of the different terrain tiles on the map. I think that would be really great, and it probably honestly wouldn't be too hard just to create a system that ends up kind of working out anyway. Plus, since the game length isn't that long, you could always set it up one way, play it through, and then swap sides with the same configuration and see how it goes. So, that's really about it. So, what do I like about the game? Well, there's quite a bit that I like about the game. Now, one thing that actually works really well in this game that doesn't work so well with others is the chance factor that this game provides. So sometimes this can be a gripe, right? With dice, uh, with card drafting, where some of that stuff is just simply not in your control. However, I think this fits quite well thematically, right? This is World War II. Uh, guns weren't as accurate as they are today. Commanding troops was not as easy and accurate as we have today. We've got better communications now. We've got better guns and equipment. But back then, things were tough. You couldn't really keep track of every single unit and exactly where they were. We didn't have GPS. Um, and also, as far as the guns go, um, they just they were a little bit tougher to deal with. So, in this game, there is card drafting. So. You can only kind of command different troops based on the cards that you have in your hand. And then the other aspect is when you attack, you roll dice. And you need to, all well, depending on what type of units you're attacking, you need to roll the right combination of icons on those dice to get the kills. So there's chance involved. But if you think about it thematically, it actually works. And it didn't bother me at all. And I actually thought that was quite cool. Um, and then the overall theme of this game. So... It is a World War II game. All the scenarios in the book are very cool because they show you uh, how to set everything up and then they give a historical background for everything. So it's a number of paragraphs that really kind of lay out what was going on at that time, what, how the battle started. What, you know, it's just very interesting. It allows you to kind of create that mental picture uh, to get into that battle. It's one thing to set up a bunch of figures on the map um, and then start battling. It's another thing to know how those figures got there and what their main objective was. And I really like that. So thematically, this game works very well 
and I really like what they've done with it. Um, another thing that's really great is the victory conditions. Now I didn't like this at first when I started playing, but I've grown to like it quite a bit as I've played more. Um, unlike some games like Risk or Axis and Allies where you need to really kind of take over everything. It's total domination across the entire map. That's how you win. This game doesn't do it that way. This is a metal-based victory. So the way that you earn medals in this game is by either taking over and holding certain points on the map, if they're there in that scenario. Um, otherwise, primarily, it's uh, completely destroying the enemy units, so specific unit groups. Once you've destroyed a whole unit group, you get to take one of those pawns, whether it's you know, a little man or a tank or whatever, and stick it on your track, which we'll see a little bit on the board. So first scenario in the book, you need to get four medals to achieve victory, either side. And really, so you still have to completely destroy four of the enemy units. There's more than four of the enemy units on the board. So it's not total domination, it's not total control, it's just being strategic based on what you see and how can you get those medals the quickest. It might sound kind of funky, but it works very well and I appreciate it. Um, another thing is, ah, so I have an 11 year old son and I love playing board games with him. He's definitely to that age now where he's starting to understand things and I don't need to just lighten up really, really um, well, lightly on him, really. Um, this game has scenarios that clearly give one side or the other an advantage and he's able to take that advantageous side and I can take the disadvantage and I don't have to be light on him. I can give it my full go and there's definitely times just depending on roles and cards and whatever where he can totally destroy me and that's been really fun. So we both feel like it's a good fair game uh, where we can both play to our fullest and it totally works and we have a lot of fun doing it. So as far as playing with my almost eight-year-olds, I could definitely see it working. There's variants in the book that allow it to be more simple. Um, and I suppose I could always just take away, you know, some troops that I have on my side too. I mean, there's, there's ways that you can manipulate it to make it work. Because really the core rules of how the movement works and how the battles and everything works, very simple. And I really like that about this game. Uh, and then lastly, the game modes. So out of the core box here, there really is primarily just one game mode where you're playing on this map that comes with it. It's a double-sided board. It's got this kind of just all green area and then it's also on the back side has, has the beach. Uh, very cool, but there's also a, I think it's called a breakthrough mode, um, you know, which I'd love to get. They've got extra maps that are a little bit bigger than the maps that come with the core game here. Uh, and they have uh, desert and snow and some, some good variety, and it's just a bigger battle. But the expansions for that are just so expensive because they're not in print currently. That would be great to try. I haven't tried it yet, but hopefully I can get my hands on one of those. And then there's also an overlord mode, which allows you to take two core boards, so you'd have to have a second person with another copy, uh, and put them together, and then two people on each side are the overlord, and then you kind of divvy out um, commands and things to other players who are on your team. I haven't played it yet, but it seems interesting. I just need to get enough people to the table to give it a try. So with all of that, oh, another thing I, I got to mention too is that army men, right? So I grew up at a time when video games weren't as prevalent and we, we played with stuff. I had a lot of little green army men that I love to to play around with and create little battles and things like that in our imagination. But we never really had a framework to make sense of those battles. It was just all up to us. This is pretty neat because it's got all sorts of uh, little figures. It's got army men, it's got tanks, it's got artillery, and a number of different terrains like sandbags and razor wire and things like that. It kind of takes you back to that time when you're playing with these little army men, um, but it, it gives you rules associated with it and a game along with it. And that's just cool. I don't know. For me, that was that was a really neat feel to it, that I'm actually playing with army men again, and it, and it works, and I'm having a great time as an adult. So with all of that, 
I think this game has been great. Um, it's, it's so easy to learn. The rules are so simple. There's great cards for reference that you can lay out on the table so you're not having to flip through the, ref through the book to reference things if needed. Um, but even still, you wouldn't have to do that much because the rule book did a great job. And uh, yeah, it's just, it's so accessible. You can get it to the table. You can get a new person playing within 15 minutes. And the strategies can vary greatly depending on the cards that you have and, and the setup that you've got. And uh, we've just been having a blast with it. So definite recommendation for me, uh, especially if you have young boys who love battles and armies and things like that. Uh, this is a great one just because of how flexible it is without you having to lighten up on them too much and make it not as much fun for you. We've both been having a blast with me and my son. And um, I suppose really the only people that I can think that might not like this game are, are people who don't like the theme of World War II and, and army battles, they don't like strategy, um, or maybe people who just kind of stick to the cooperative experiences and don't like to do head on, you know, head on versus somebody else. Otherwise, I don't know why you wouldn't like it. It's, uh, it's just a fantastic little game. So highly recommended for me. Um, yeah, no doubt. So now with that, I'll get into some of the details. If you want to stick around and check out some of the uh, further information about this game, feel free. Otherwise, go out and get it if you don't have it. It's awesome. Okay, the next thing I want to talk about is the rule book. Um, they really did a fantastic job with this book. Great quality. Pages are thick. Um, it's very thematic with the fonts and coloring and everything that they chose to go with this. It's really easy to get through. It doesn't drag on. The rules are simple, laid out in a very clear way that really you can read through it once and have probably 90, 95% um, understanding of, of what you got to do. There's really only one thing that I had to reference after I read through it all, and that was having to do with the taking ground and the armor overrun. So just make sure you read that and understand that fully. Otherwise, everything else is very straightforward, and they did a great job. They also have a lot of different pictures and things to highlight how movement works and line of sight works and combat works, and it was just really good. I don't even know what I would change to make this any better. They really did a fantastic job. Um, then, on the last part of the, of the book is all the scenarios. So, again, there are 16 that come with this core book here. Uh, they're all different. They all have historical backgrounds that are unique and show you how to set everything up and put all the terrain on there. They list out the conditions of victory that are needed for that particular um, scenario, any special rules that may apply. Some of them are really cool, too. I think it was uh, the second... Yeah, it was the second scenario here. There, When I was looking at the Allied forces... I was kind of surprised at how few that there were, but then I read in the special rules that you actually take, I think it was four or five, maybe four, yeah, four infantry soldiers, put them in your hand, and you hold them 12 inches above the map anywhere, and you drop them, and it's to simulate an airdrop, right? So wherever they land, you get to reinforce those troops. Uh, if any fall off the map at all, you lose them. So that was... <laughs> <laughs> that was kind of cool because again you get to choose wherever on the map you want to do that so it's just interesting things that, that they did to make it you know uh, fun and, and enjoyable and a really really great job with this book again I don't know what I would even do to change it I was very pleased with it made it very easy as I had mentioned before the game comes with a small little stack of reference cards and they show you everything from unit movement and targeting and how many dice you roll for an attack to what all the different obstacles on the map do and what all the different uh, terrain tiles do and how they affect gameplay. Very nice just to be able to set these out next to the board and easily reference them because again the rules are are easy. Um, there's just you know little little points here and there that you might need to try to remember uh, how it works and this really helps with that a lot. It's been great. I love these things. Now when you're doing attacks um, you're rolling dice as I mentioned before as well and each dice is the same and it comes with uh, two infantry icons, uh, a green star, 
a retreat flag, a grenade, and a tank. So when you are attacking something, you roll, and it depends on what you're attacking, not what you're attacking with. So if you're attacking infantry, you need to roll either the two infantrymen or a grenade. Um, if you're attacking tanks, it needs to be either the tank or the grenade. And if you're attacking, uh, what is it? Um, oh, come on. Artillery. You need to roll just a grenade. So artillery are harder to hit. Infantry are the easiest to hit. Also, if you roll a flag or even multiple flags, you will force the enemy to have to retreat. However number of uh, spaces, flags that you rolled. Um, which can be very helpful as well. So it's uh, it's just it's, it's really interesting how it plays out, and these dice uh, make it pretty cool and give it that kind of chance element that that I like. It has a good feel to it. All right, so we've got the first scenario set up here. This is what it looks like. Uh, you can see on uh, right here and right here that there are red lines, and this is sectioning off the left flank, the center, and the right flank, and that is due to the cards that you play with. So you'll have, uh, depending on the scenario, a different number of cards that you keep in your hand, uh, which look like this. So there are gray cards and there's green cards. The gray cards are your tactic cards. And green cards, uh, I guess I don't remember what, what they're called specifically, but um, they have just different things on them. There's a big variety. So this one, for instance, allows you to order three units on the left side, on the left flank. Uh, this one is two units on the left flank. This is one in the center, three on the right. So it, you know, there's a good variety. This is all in the center. And then these tactic cards have a good variety of things too. Like this ambush is actually more of a reactionary card that you can play when somebody declares a close combat on you. Um, this close assault gives you some benefits as well with your infantry. Um, there's yeah, this one's a, a good powerful one. It allows you to, to control, to order four units anywhere of your choice. Um, and then there's also cards that allow you to do uh, like an airdrop. And, and it really, it's not an attack with any of your units. It's it's one that you roll, you kind of pick like a group of people and you roll accordingly. Um, it's very cool. A good variety of stuff in here. Um, but what I really like about this is that you're limited on what you can attack based on the cards that you have in your hand. If I wanted to m move and do an attack with the units on the left side over here, but I didn't have any cards that allowed them to move, well, they're just kind of stuck. And I might need to prioritize with some different units. Um, like I mentioned before, the goal in this scenario is to get four medals. And you get the medals on this one by either taking and holding uh, either of the two bridge locations or by completely eliminating an entire enemy unit here. And the infantry units are made of four. And so the way that an attack would go, um, well, let's just keep it simple. So if, if, this, if these guys were here, so infantry gets a range of three. And if they're one space away, you get to roll three dice, two spaces away, two dice, one space away is one dice. So in this case, if I was attacking these guys, I would roll two dice. And, oh, okay, well, that's interesting. So if I rolled any infantry, one infantry would be dead per infantry dice. Or if I rolled grenade, they would die as well. Um, but in this case, we rolled two retreat flags and what you have to do with these is move back towards your side of the board two spaces so these guys can move here or here for the first one and then here or here for the second one so now they're out of range so that's kind of how that works and that changes a bit depending on if you've got uh, armor which is the tanks or infantry and then there's also terrain on the board that that affects line of sight like forests uh, block line of sight. Water does not block line of sight. You can get into the forests and they give you a benefit. They make uh, other people shooting in uh, roll less dice. You can't cross streams. You have to go over the bridge. There's these sandbags here that provide them a minus one dice for when they're being attacked. Um, these are like barbed wire rolls and it's uh, difficult to get through. 
Um, you can't move through them. You got to stop once you get into them. Um, yeah, there's just there's a lot of variety, and there's a lot of things here too that that aren't uh, shown. Like these are hills. Uh, there's hedgerows. There's all sorts of cool stuff that really kind of change up how this plays out. Um, but in this case, there's a couple different strategies you could go for off the bat. So here we've got, on the right, we've got a unit, and a unit, and the bridge. If I tried to take a few units here and swarm these two units and take over the bridge, I would have three medals already, and I'm one away from victory. Otherwise, you could try to swarm this side. It all depends on what you want to do and the cards that you have. So strategy can vary greatly. And also you might get to the point where you're having some combat over here and you get down to just one guy. Well, he could probably take you out fairly easily. It'd probably be a good idea to start backing up with these guys and then block them, block the line of sight with a different group. So interesting, interesting strategies and I'm just loving how this plays out. It's simple, but yet it's still strategic and fun. So that is Memoir 44. It's been a great game. We keep getting this out on the table multiple times per week, especially with my son, and we are just loving it. So I highly recommend it. And hopefully this review has been somewhat helpful to kind of explain what the game's about, who it's for, and uh, whether or not you might like it. So please definitely leave me a comment and let me know uh, if this is helpful or what I can do to provide more useful information to you. Uh, again, this is just episode number one, and I'm just, I don't know what I'm doing. I'm just giving it a try. <laughs> so, uh, yeah, please give me some feedback. Um, if you totally don't like it, at least be constructive with your criticism. I'm totally open to that, too. I know that there's tons of people who make board game reviews. I'm just another drop in, in the pool. But um, hopefully, again, this has been helpful to you. So, thank you very much.